Welcome back to the Real Estate News. Joining me now is Bill Fletcher with Unisource Mortgage Services. Welcome, Bill. We're so happy to have you with us today. It's great to be with you again, Jenny. So spring is in the air. Things are heating up. There's lots of activity on the mortgage front. So you can let us know what's happening out there. That's right. We finished a tremendous first quarter, and I don't expect things to slow down uh, in real estate uh, for the month coming months. And April's a big month. The weather is warming up. Right. Uh, Hilton Head has the opportunity to host one of the premier pro golf tournaments in the RBC Heritage. Mm -hmm. And with all these great things going on, nobody really wants to talk or think about April 15th, which right. is the deadline for filing income taxes. Now, and you know, obviously we are in, in the midst of tax season or at the tail end of it. So for people who are thinking of purchasing or refinancing a home, do you have any advice for them? Certainly. Well, I'm not a tax professional, so I don't, I don't give tax advice. Right. However, I certainly have a few recommendations. Number one, you want to have your mortgage professional as part of your wealth management team. Yes. Uh, if you're working with a CPA who does your uh, tax preparation, if you're working with a financial advisor who handles your investments, it makes sense to have a mortgage professional on that team so that when you are ready to invest in real estate, whether it's the purchase of a residence or an investment property, mm -hmm. you have the personnel on board on your financial team to help guide you. In addition to that, I would also recommend uh, that they take a look at the uh, tax deductions that mm -hmm. they're writing off on their tax returns, because in some cases, those tax deductions will actually reduce the amount of qualifying income yes. that lenders will use when qualifying an individual for a mortgage. So which deductions specifically have the most impact on a borrower's ability to qualify? Okay, so really you have two forms that are most common. You have Schedule A, mm -hmm. where folks write off their uh, home interest, charitable giving, and so forth. And towards the bottom of that form, there's a section for unreimbursed employee expenses. Okay. That's a direct write-off of your income. So if you report those expenses on your tax return, it's going to be a deduction off your gross income. Additionally, on Schedule C for sole proprietors, uh, their expenses are listed on that. It's a reduction of their gross income. Uh, the one bright spot is if you are writing off deductions on Schedule C, the one thing that we can add back in for qualifying purposes is any depreciation that you write off on that form. Yes, I, many a nights we've been thrilled over depreciation when doing <laughs> income qualifications in the past. Now, and especially in this area, you know, we have a lot of self-employed um, you know, small businesses in this area. That's so right. for self-employed borrowers, you know, rule of thumb used to be you had to have two years completed tax returns. Is that still the, the status quo? You know what? Thankfully, we're starting to see lending guidelines loosen up a little bit when Yay. it comes to self-employed borrowers. And so in most cases, if the borrower has at least 5% equity or 5% down payment, they may qualify by just going off the most recent year's tax return okay. instead of having to average the income for the last two years. Which is very, very helpful, especially if you're in the early stages of your business. That's exactly so, right. Very good. Bill, as always, I think the most important thing to get across is that you're clearly an expert at what you do and are, have plenty of advice for your clients. So thank you for your time today and for sharing your expertise. My pleasure, Jenny. Thank you.